Hi again. Welcome to another of our talks about people in the Bible who met with Jesus. It's been great to be able to see how people found themselves talking and listening to someone who so obviously had something about him so much more special than anyone else they'd ever met before. And the wonderful thing is that people like you and me are still meeting Jesus just as we are in the everyday circumstances of life. People like us who carry all sorts of life issues, dealing with the day-to-day -day pressures, looking for the light at the end of the tunnel, just trying to do our best and hoping for good things to come. But the good news for all of us is that Jesus knows all about those life issues we face, but he absolutely longs to meet up with us right where we are because he already loves us unconditionally and he wants us to learn to trust him and to love him back he has cleared the way for us to enter into an amazing and eternal relationship with god our father and with himself as our savior starting today so this time let's read about nicodemus who met jesus at night and how that began an amazing journey in his life and this man's story begins like this in the gospel of john in the bible the gospel of john chapter 3 and verse 1 which says there was a man named nicodemus a jewish religious leader who was a pharisee and after dark one evening he came to speak with jesus rabbi he said we all know that god has sent you to teach us and your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? So obviously, Nicodemus was pretty puzzled by uh, by this answer that Jesus gave but Jesus says to him look I know you don't get it yet but the son of man has come down from heaven he said and as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life for this is how God loved the world he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have ever everlasting life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. So Nicodemus is obviously curious about Jesus, who he was, where he came from. What authority he had to speak and act the way he did but the thing was Nicodemus didn't want anyone knowing that he was planning to meet up with Jesus anytime soon and so he's waited until after dark to hide his interests and avoid questions or criticism from others in his social or family circles so it seems clear that Nicodemus believed in the God of all creation and felt he knew all about God and what God wanted from him. But we find that actually he's living with pressures in his life. You see, he's recognised by people as a religious leader. And he was expected by people around him to hold to an ever-evolving set of holy rules and regulations designed to help him at least appear to be more holy and more pure. And internally, all the time, Nicodemus just hoped his self-imposed purity and holiness would bring him nearer to God in this life and therefore provide hope for a life in the presence of God for eternity after his own death. And what Nicodemus finds curious is that this man Jesus clearly comes with all the authority of God to teach and to do miraculous things which could only be done if God was with him. But at the same time, Jesus went out of his way to meet people and go to places that for Nicodemus would spell serious loss of recognition as a religious leader. And even lead him to being 
seen as unholy and impure not only by those close to him but by God himself so Nicodemus meets Jesus at night to begin a conversation which actually would transform his life it may be you also believe in the God of all creation maybe you've also built up a belief that if you just keep yourself from doing too many bad things and if you don't mix with the wrong people then God will look kindly on you and hopefully take you into heaven after this life's over but you know Jesus doesn't want you to have all that pressure of uncertainty of wondering if you will ever be good enough for God to accept into his heavenly home Jesus wants you to have a complete confidence and the peace of knowing that you have been given a new life through faith and trust in himself as the one God has sent to carry away all your sin and bring you into an everlasting relationship with God as your father who loves you more than you could ever imagine and that's why Jesus says to Nicodemus unless you are born again you can't see the kingdom of God and the truth that Jesus wanted to share with Nicodemus is that he can never make his own life good enough to enter into the kingdom of God but that in fact God loves him so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life and God sent his son Jesus says into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him the new life Jesus tells Nicodemus and us about today is not based on making our old human lives purer and holier but it's based on receiving a completely new spiritual life which can never get tarnished by the ups and downs of life a new life which is forever pure and holy because it's given to us from God himself who has forever accepted the price of his son Jesus Christ uh, that he paid on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin and the gift of eternal life which is open to all who would ever believe in him so what happened to Nicodemus following this conversation with Jesus well we see him two more times in the Bible once in the Gospel of John chapter 7 where he's back with his regular group and they're arguing about a failed attempt to, to arrest Jesus and Nicodemus gets strongly criticized for questioning the group if it would actually be legal to convict a man before he's given a hearing and then the last time we read about Nicodemus is in also the Gospel of John but in chapter 19 verses 38 to 42 which tell us what happened just after Jesus had died on the cross and John records that Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus body and with him came Nicodemus the man who would come to Jesus at night and he brought about 33 kilograms of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes and together they wrapped Jesus body with the spices in long sheets of linen cloth and the place of the crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb and they laid Jesus there what a transformation this conversation with Jesus at night had brought to Nicodemus's life you know he had seen the way Jesus gave his life on the cross Jesus had spoken words of forgiveness for those who tortured and crucified him Jesus spoke words of comfort and salvation to a thief dying beside him Jesus asked one of his closest disciples and his mother to look after each other Jesus spoke to God his father placing his spirit into his hands as he breathed his last and now 
here in broad daylight nicodemus along with joseph of arimathea boldly asked to take down the body of jesus from the cross to wrap him in linen cloths and perfumed ointment in line with jewish burial, burial traditions and maybe now for the first time the words of isaiah the prophet so familiar to nicodemus began to make sense 700 years before this moment isaiah had written about a time in the future when galilee of the gentiles will be filled with glory and the people who walk in darkness will see a great light he goes on to say for a child is born to us a son is given to us the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace his government and its peace will never end but until now, maybe Nicodemus might never have understood who Isaiah was talking about when Isaiah went on to write in chapter 55 of the same book. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Nicodemus, he cast aside all the pressures of life as a religious leader as he knelt on the ground to prepare the perfumed ointment and the linen grave clothes for his saviour. He stopped being anxious about maintaining his own personal purity and holiness as he handled the battered and bruised body of God's only son who had died to give him new life. As a Pharisee, his preparation for the Passover feast due to be celebrated the very next day would have been so different before this. What would have made him ceremonially unclean in his own thoughts and amongst his fellow religious leaders is completely overturned now as his hands lovingly handle the dead body of a man cast out by society. Maybe you needed time to think about what Jesus has done too maybe you've got a belief in god but you've never thought about god inviting you to stop trying to be good and simply to trust that his son jesus has done all that god asked him so that you can have all your sin washed away and so that you can begin a new life and enter into a perfect and unending relationship with god as your heavenly father Nicodemus made a decision to give over his life in honour of Jesus as he worked to prepare for his burial that day. But can you imagine his utter joy and delight when just three days later Jesus' grave was empty and the linen grave cloths were left where they were and Jesus himself had been seen talking and eating with his disciples alive and ready to go into heaven to prepare a place for them all just as he had promised you see jesus promise to you is that as he died for your sins to bring you back into relationship with god he also arose from the grave having defeated death so that you can have this eternal life that he promises in his father's house where a mansion has been prepared you know, my prayer is that you will decide to receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour today. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your life on the cross in my place. Thank you for dying and rising again from the dead to give me new life to fill me with peace from God and to write the guarantee of eternal salvation over me. Thank you for your great love that made all this freely available to me. Help me now to step out of the darkness into the light, trusting your love and receiving new life from you now. 
and give me your strength to live this new life for your praise and your honour. Amen. Thank you again for listening and may you find God's blessing on you in Jesus name. Amen.